Hare Krishna devotees, please accept my humble obeisance of all gods of Sri Prabhupada. Welcome to devotees to today's morning class. Today we'll be discussing from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 18, Verse 50. And this is the last verse in this chapter. The conclusion of the chapter is how Marsh Parikshit was cursed by the Brahmin boy. And we are very happy to have His Holiness Chandramali Swami with us, who's going to be concluding this verse and hopefully the whole chapter to give us a really good view, a summary of the whole um, topic. And Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All grace to you and Prabhupada Maharaj. And it's all yours. Yeah. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Payasa Saravo Loke, Payadwan Dwe Su Yokitaha, Nava Janti Narishanti, Yata Atma Gunatrayaha. Generally, the transcendentalists, even though engaged by others in the dualities of the material world, were not distressed, nor do they take pleasure in worldly things, for they are transcendentally engaged. Therefore, the transcendentalists are the impure philosophers, the mystics, and the devotees of the Lord. The theories of philosophers aim at the perfection of merging into the being of the absolute. This aim of perceiving the all pervading super soul, the devotees of the Lord are engaged in transcendental loving service to the personality of Godhead. Since Brahman, Parman, and Bhagavan are different phases of the same transcendent, all these transcendentalists are beyond the three modes of material nature. The fear of distress and happiness are products of the three modes, and therefore the causes of such material distress and happiness have nothing to do with the transcendentalists. The king was a devotee and the rishi was a mystic. Therefore, both of them were unattached to the accidental incident created by the supreme will. The playful child was an instrument fulfilling the Lord's will. On the John So, yeah, so this verse in purport refers to the incident where Maharaj Parishwad was cursed by the Brahman boy Sringi, and both the father of the boy and Maharaj Parishwad were more or less players in this 
to the game that was arranged by the Supreme Lord for the uh, speaking of the Srimad Bhagavatam and for the elevation of Maharaj Krishna to go back home, back to Godhead. So this is fundamentally very important to understand that for one who's engaged in devotional service, whatever happens or doesn't happen, there's a reason which is beneficial for the devotee. Those who are mixed devotees who still have material desires and they're trying to build material desires while they're executing their own human service cannot really understand how things are working, either positively or apparently negatively. But a devotee who is fixed in devotional service sees the hand of Krishna in everything. And this hand of Krishna is not something imaginary, it is actually the reality. Because the hand of the Lord is on is not only in everybody's life, but even in their thoughts. As Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, the Vaishajaham Vidisani the Stone Matat Smirti Jnana Fodam Chat. If you want remembrance, I give it. I give forgetfulness and I also give knowledge. And the Lord is the the ultimate remote cause of everything, both material and spiritual. But he works through his different energies to make things happen. And for the devotee who is engaged fully in his devotional service, they are under the Daivi Shakti, the spiritual energy. So it looks like Maharaj Purusha was unfairly cursed. And when we read the purports in some of the previous verses, we find that that statement is given. He should have never been cursed. The boy was just acting in the wrong way. He, he was uh, trying to show off in front of his playmates just to use his power. And uh, apparently he was a little disturbed, but not in, in his, in the reaction to his disturbance was way beyond the uh, in the level of the activity that Maharaj Pariksit did. It wasn't such an offensive thing he did. Of course it was he does he did transgress proper etiquette. And uh, apparently there was a reason for that. And so uh, it wasn't so serious. But the boy went way beyond. So therefore the devotee as it says here, Maharaj Pariksha had the power to counteract that curse because of his power in devotional service. But he accepted it as the hand of the Lord. And therefore, that was the Lord's will because he knew. But devotees who are fixed in devotional service, they see Krishna in everything. They look for Krishna in everything. Not only do they see it, but they look for Krishna in everything. And by their intelligence and by the practice of their devotion and service, they're able to evaluate how things are happening and why they're happening. And they always take advantage of that. Maharaj Pariksit, he had, from a material point of view, a nice, a nice arrangement, you know, nice family, uh, powerful kingdom, resources, no enemies. Everything was ideal from his, for his duty as a king. But, you know, Krishna thought, all right, I need someone to bring about the speaking of the Bhagavatam. And so he arranged it in this way. And pure devotee accepts the arrangement of the Lord knowing that there is some reason why things are happening, some good reason, some beneficial reason. And that's how the world is see things. We have the example of my disciple Janaki and of course, Bhakti Krishna Swami too, both of them were under the influence apparently of of some disease, but that they accepted it 
he has the mercy of the Lord and took the advantage to leave this material world and attain to the spiritual kingdom. Uh, so that's how a devotee accepts things. Sometimes they try to counteract, but when they when they're counteracting, they're always aware that ultimately it may be the arrangement of the Lord. And so they do something in that direction to counteract the apparent misery or anomaly that comes upon him, but then they don't put much energy into it, much effort into it. And the Maharaj Thurishan, he knew all he had to do was use his power as a king, as a pure devotee, and he could have, but he, he saw that there was a greater message coming. So he accepted that. Then he took, he said, oh, here's a chance to go back home, back to Godhead. And therefore he prepared himself. And so this is also very instructive. We should always be preparing ourselves to leave the world. Because leaving the world is not planned by us. It's planned by higher powers. And therefore, no one knows exactly when that time will come. So a devotee lives in such a way as to not to make big plans to become happy in the material world. If they have some responsibility with family and occupation, they do it in the minimal way in order to maintain their body and soul and practice Krishna consciousness. In other words, they do what's necessary and not more than that. And because their main business is not to uh, make a nice arrangement here, but to make an arrangement which allows them to do their service and so they can prepare themselves to go back home, back to Godhead. So one has to always be aware of the time factor and how it works. And then it works according to, to Krishna, because Krishna is all about the end time. He, he is time manifested in the impersonal aspect of the material energy. And so that time factor is never under the control of the conditioned souls. A devotee is always thinking, this could be my last day, so let me serve in such a way as I'm done. I become ideal in my service, in my glorification of the Lord in my relationships with the other devotees. They don't live in the future. They live in the present. I saw a little cartoon just the other day. Someone showed me. It was a little, it was done in an animated way, but it had a nice message. It says, the past is history. The, uh, the future is mystery. Past is history. The future is mystery. The present the now, now is a gift. And that's why it's called presence. <laughs> now is a gift. Therefore, it's called presence. <laughs> so therefore, yeah, now is the most important time. We can only live in the present. So living in the present means to live in Krishna conscious at every moment and not postpone our spiritual life for a later date. Because there is no such thing as a later day. It's always now. And one who lives in the present lives. One who lives in the past laments. And one who lives in the future simply dreams. <laughs> So, yeah, so here, both, and the Rishi, too, Samak Rish, he was a mystic yoga, yogi. Both of them regretted how the, how the boy acted, but none of them did anything to try to counteract it. And it says both of them were aloof from all of these things. So as it says here, generally the trans, even though engaged by others in dualities of the material world, are not distressed. 
Sometimes the materialists will drag a devotee into something mundane, but the devotee doesn't get, you know, attracted or disturbed by that. They suddenly have to tolerate it and go on and their Krishna consciousness. Okay, so let's see what else can we mention upon this material. And uh, distress and happiness are two sides of the material energies, uh, gifts to the living entity. Sometimes you're happy, sometimes you're distressed. Sometimes people are happy over other people who are distressed and sometimes people are distressed when other people are happy so the happiness and distress is just the illusionary energy working to make things happen favorably or unfavorably according to our own estimation of how things should go on but a devotee just learns how to see krishna's hand and everything take advantage of that and remember Krishna and pray to Krishna and um, take the opportunity to use the situation to become Krishna conscious. And so it says here, both of them were unattached to the accidental incident created by the Supreme Will. Uh, it's interesting, the word accidental instance, incident, incident, and then created by the Supreme Will. So the Supreme Will created something that looked like an accident. <laughs> but in the ultimate sense, what is meant to happen in that way. When Krishna wants something to happen, there's nothing anybody can do. It's mentioned in the seventh canto when uh, when uh, the demons and the devotees, demons and the, and the demigods were fighting, and the demons had Maya Donovan on their side, and he was a mystic, and he had created this this well of water, which was like a life giving elixir. So when the demons were killed, he would take their body and throw it into this, this uh, well. And then they would get this life-giving elixir. And then they would come back to life and with even more power before and continue to fight. So the demigods were getting frustrated. They were killing the demons, but they were coming back again. So the demigods headed by injury decided to go to the Lord Brahma and tell him the situation. Brahma came up with an idea that he and Shiva would turn into a calf and a cow. And they came onto the scene and they start drinking the elixir, both the calf and the cow. When Mayadhanada saw what was happening, he understood this was the will of the Supreme Lord. And it says that you plan something and I plan something, but our plans don't really mean anything. It's the plan of the Supreme that is the real plan, and that plan will unfold accordingly. So when the demons saw what was happening, they had they were they couldn't do anything because ultimately Maya Dhamma had said. It's the will of the Lord. There's nothing we can do. <laughs> so they accepted it in that way. The Prabhupada writes in that same way. You have your plans, I have my plans, but Krishna's plans is a real plan. <laughs> so devotees have to align themselves with the plan of the Lord, and then their plan will always be fulfilled. And the plan of the Lord is not contrary to the benefit of the devotee. In fact, it fulfills the needs of the devotees at every, at every step. Therefore, success means to find out what is the plan of the devotee, or what is the plan of the Lord, and how do you do that? By approaching the spiritual master, 
and asking him what and how best can I say And then the spiritual master's duty is to engage the devotee according to how best that they can serve and make the progress in Krishna consciousness. And that's ultimately the plan of the Lord. The plan of the Lord is he wants everyone to come back to him and devote him. That's his ultimate plan. Okay, thank you. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much for con concluding this chapter and um, giving us a good, actually a good summary of the, the whole chapter you know, why Maharaj Prashit was cursed by the Brahmin boy. I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to request devotees to please, if you can, wherever you are, if you're able to, to please turn on your videos so that uh, we can see each other and take it as an association. And if you have any questions, any clarification or doubt, please do raise your hand. I'm going to uh, actually, okay, I got it up. So if you have any questions, any comments, please uh, do raise your hand and I will call upon you in the order that I see. Marge, uh, okay, Marge, I have a question and I'm trying to pull up my question here. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Um, I don't like March, when you um, said, um, you know, live in the moment instead of in the future, and many times the mind just runs into the future more than living in the moment or in the past. Like we put more, you know, if we were to look on a percentage level, we spend so much time in the future and in the past, not so much in the moment. How can we really develop that? consciousness of living in the moment at the present. Well, Bhakti Vinodha Thakur, in his beautiful poem, he has one couplet, four lines, he says, forget the past that sleeps, near the future, dream it all, act the times with that, that are with thee, and progress we shall fall. The past is gone, we can learn from the past, the future is simply a dream. We can plan for the future, but we can we have to live in the present. So the future really depends on the quality of the activities that we perform in the present. Because ultimately there's no such thing as future because it's always it's always the present. The future is just a mind for projection based on the element of material time that, that something will happen in a later part of my life. And that's called future. But if you live in the present and you become Krishna conscious in the present, you'll be Krishna conscious in the future. If you think I'll postpone my Krishna consciousness now for the future. When I'm in the future, then I'll be Krishna conscious. Then the future will never come. It's just a, it's just an idea. So the present is the only reality. So if you want to yeah, whatever you're doing now, whatever you're thinking about now, apply it to your day-to-day -day life and devotional service. Now. Thank you, Marge. I um, will definitely... People want to, people think it's not so good now, but it will be better in the future. <laughs> That's, that's, <laughs> that's so true much i've heard that and then they hope that it's going to get better and it just doesn't seem to get better yeah hope it rains home <laughs> that's true marge thank you marge yes yeah. balaji i'm sorry marge yeah balaji. yes go go ahead balaji prabhu Hare krishna maharaj uh, the note pronouns all glories to srila Prabhupada. 
um maharaj um, you said you know we have to align with uh, lord's uh, you know plan but in um, bhagavad gita in the last uh, chapter you know um, lord has said that sarva dharman parityajya mam emakam sharanam braja so we have to give up everything and then you know surrender on to him right so how do we know what is his plan and you know do we really need to think about that maharaj no the guru is the guru engages you in the book no service the krishna says surrender he means he says he's, he's asking us to give up your own ideas on how you can be happy in this world and simply accept his his way which is the way to yourself he's asking you to do what's best for you okay my yeah because he's we think we know better we think we know what's best for us but we don't <laughs> even if we have some idea Krishna's plan is always better because he when he says see he got inside the day and I'm the friend of all of the people he is suhit suhit means the best friend that friend who knows how what is best for you so we accept this man that he knows more than i do about what's good for me and the side of find out that plan how to come to that plan is the duty of the spiritual master to impart that to the disciple. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. You have a very nice question. Any questions from devotees, please do raise your hand and I will call upon you. Maharaj, another question. Um, that I have is you touched upon um, Shringi, you know, because he was so immature that he was showing off to his friends. But also we know that, um, you know, everything is planned by the Lord because he wanted the Bhagavatam to be heard. But going back to the point of immaturity, Maharaj, the concept of immaturity and showing off, Sometimes we come across situations today where devotees struggle with that, you know, immature and showing off that I'm a devotee of the Lord. How can we develop the maturity and humility? Well, the Lord will work with the anomalies that devotees have and then turn it into, into some way of correction, which will bring the person back to where he's supposed to. So, although the Lord is not bewildered by how our wrong activities, because he knows how to adjust that to bring us back to where we're supposed to be. Because that's if we accept. So we have no problem with that. But immaturity means to, uh, to waste time and think that the devotional service is for uh, gaining something material. It's for serving the Lord and purifying the heart mm -hmm. and ultimately going back to the spiritual world. When you accept the ultimate principle, then you have to work to make that, to work to align yourself with that principle. And so the, the etiquette of a Vaishnava, the behavior of the Vaishnava, is more or less the, the mood by which the Vaishnava aligns themselves up with the plan of the Lord by following the Lord's direction through the spiritual master, who teaches the, the devotee not only what to do, but how to do it. And how the how element is the etiquette of the Lord is used, but in proper behavior. Mm -hmm. 
Well, if you want to be receptive to something, you have to be in a receptive mood. <laughs> you're in a challenging mood or you're somewhat less attentive, then you can't be receptive. Mm -hmm. Carrying out the thing is the second stage, receptivity and understanding is the first thing. So when behavior is proper, or when consciousness is in the right uh, state, and then receptivity becomes easier. We have to practice that. We have to practice to align ourselves with the with the rules and regulations, Maharaj, of devotional service that's pleasing to the Lord and to the Guru. Well, yeah, and, and, and the behavior that is behavior that, that makes that makes the, the devotional service pleasing. The etiquette, the consciousness. There's people who serve to please the Lord, and there's are people who serve to gain something from the Lord. Both are directing your attention towards the Lord. One is trying to get something, and one is trying to give something. Thank you, Marge. Really, really strong points. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sri Dev Mataji, go ahead. Thank you, Anasiya. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my most humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Guru Maharaj, I have this question about the plan of the Lord. We know that the plan of the Lord is the best plan because he's an ever well-wisher. But at the same time, on the practical level, we may have fear of the unknown. We have, may have fear of what is to come if I do this or how can I do this or what is what is going to happen to me if I do this so how do we overcome these fears which plague the mind and block us from putting our foot forward the statement by the Lord he says in all in all situations just depend on me if you depend on the Lord, why should you be fearful? If you depend on your own abilities and your own plans, then there's cause for fear. Depend on Him, execute your activities, but depend on Him for the, for the mercy. And the greater the endeavor, or the more important the migration of the world, the more we should depend on the world. So you have to do it. So if you have to cook something, so uh, that you can do. But you might also depend on the Lord to help you cook nice. But then if you have to give a Bhagavatam class in my opinion, so that requires more dependence on the world and more prayer because it's more overwhelming. It's more, uh, what we say, hard to align our consciousness easily with that service unless we really depend on the world. <laughs> so why fear simply comes when we Realize that you're the you're the doer. As long as you think you're the doer, you're going to be fearful. Yes, Guru Maharaj, I understand this in theory, but I have uh, doubts. I have trust issues. I have my own. Anarthas, 
So for me, I think going deeper into my chanting is the only uh, solution for me to learn to depend on the Lord. That's what I mean. So just take the take, take the principle. He says, depend on me. Okay. Why Thank you. We, why should we argue with that principle? <laughs> Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Maharaj, uh, to piggyback on uh, Sri Devi's question, I was remembering a, a sentence that um, that I read in one of Sri Prabhupada's uh, lecture transcription, where he said, um, to the degree that we think we are independent, to that degree we are dependent. But still, Maharaj, we just don't get it. And I'm just thinking, um, is do we is like Sri Devi said, you know, we got to go deeper in our chanting. And is that the only solution, Maharaj, or do we have to do more than just the chanting? Like, do we have to, you know, reading, association? Like, I'm, I'm just trying to think how to speed up the process <laughs> it's a matter of building your faith that's it. if your faith is weak your your enthusiasm will will not be there and then doubts will also come so you have to you have to fortify and build your faith through association with the devotees and through reading the books. Standing is also there. If we take the words of Srila Prabhupada as the words of Krishna, which they are, then we're getting the words of Krishna directly coming to us in the form of transcendental knowledge. We have to read them and try to improve, uh, understand them. Mar, that was a powerful statement you said about taking the words of Sri Prabhupada as the words of Krishna. That's really powerful, Marge. Wow. It's, it's a fact. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So well, if we don't read the book, then how can you how can how can anybody help you? You don't associate with the devotees and how can people help? These things are, are fundamental to receiving the knowledge which will build our faith. Thank you, Maharaj. Maharaj, that's, that's a question here by Ileana. Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. All good to share Prabhupada. We are always instruments of the Lord, even when we are unaware of our actions. What is the difference between a materialistic person who is unaware of his actions and a devotee who is aware if the result is the same behavior, what role does awareness have of one's actions play in spiritual life? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a mindless program. You're not robots. <laughs> Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shira Prabhupada, all glories to you, and uh, all glories to David. Yeah, so um, devotional service means to serve with a desire to please. And so that means being aware of the service, how to execute the service and developing the mood of wanting to please you know we want the lord to accept our services we want the devotees to accept our services so that 
awareness in Krishna consciousness is Krishna consciousness. We call it Krishna conscious, not Krishna unconscious. You want to be Krishna unconscious, then keep her in the mistake of all. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. I hope that helped, Thank Eliana. Yeah, it helped. Yeah. Okay. You have to be aware. You can't be mindless. Mindless means you know, spaced out. Spaced out means you're nothing up to nothing in the sub cerebral cerebral cortex. Yeah. 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 Yeah
You can gain the knowledge in one second if you aspire for it. You try for it. And Marge, how do we deal with that ignorance? <laughs> My ignorance is just a shadow of reality. The principle is knowledge. And when knowledge is not there, it's ignorance. Fill the, fill the gap with knowledge and then there's no ignorance. Thank you, Marge. This is very powerful. Wow. Devotees, please do shoot your questions. Please do send them. This is a very powerful questions, very powerful discussion. We're getting, I mean, uh, straight up simple sh to the sweet short form of answers. You can't get it any, any better than this, in, in my humble opinion. So please uh, do uh, post your questions. And, you know, anything that's coming to mind, please do raise your hand and ask so we can really, you know, get the answers that we've been carrying in our minds for so long. Marge, um, yeah, I can, the, I can yes, give Marge. You, I can give you the theoretical principle by which you can understand, but the application, yes, Marge. The application comes from, from you based on the situation. Since I'm speaking theoretically, I'm not using any situation but when situations are there then you can be more precise on how to apply according to that particular situation yes march thank you any questions from the yes frick should go ahead Krishna Maharaj, please accept humble obeisances. All glory to your bow, man. Um, it's wonderful to hear and hear and hear and hear. And today is a huge example of why that's so true. Um, I don't have a question, but I am I'm almost to tears in appreciation of this lecture. I'm gonna hear it over and over and over again. Thank you very much. Thank you for by your response means that you you understand. Yes, Marge. It's really deep, Marge. I, I have to definitely second Brixit's comment. This is a class, I think. Um, the points, the questions, the answers is really, as I say, the hit it the nail on the head or some that American slang, whatever that slang is, is like right on. We get it or we don't get it. It's really, really deep. And I really hope devotees are really taking all the points to heart and meditating on it throughout the day. Really, really deep. Thank you so much. Any questions from devotees? Anything that's coming to us? Sri Devi, you look like your mind is running. I can just see it. <laughs> anything that's coming i'm just thinking how uncanny it is that guru Maharaj said you may have to give Srimad bhagavatam class and that's exactly what is happening tomorrow <laughs> and uh, it's only by guru Dev's mercy that i'll be able to do that because it's very challenging for me so guru Maharaj, please shower me with your blessings because i'm very incompetent foolish unqualified lazy uh, disturbed and totally uh, useless. I, I cannot do this. I feel very incompetent at present, honestly. Even though I have prepared, even though I have read for five days, still I'm nervous like a... I don't know. Anyway, I humbly beg for the blessings of all the Vaishnavas and Gurudev. Yeah, just consider that this is a great opportunity for advancement. Great opportunity to enlighten others in Krishna consciousness. It's a great opportunity to purify your own self and get over these hurdles of fear and hesitation and accept these things and opportunities for making advancements to your family.
You can see it. My most humble obeisances and grateful thanks at your lotus feet, Gurudev. Thank you. Can you. See, you, can see the, you can see the same thing in five or six, seven different ways. But there's one right way to move at least. Every other way you see it is not actually the way to see it. If you accept the principle of service and you've given that service and the service appears to be challenging, then you have to understand, all right, it's going to be challenging. What am I going to do? I can study, but that's not enough. And what I do is just I study and then I, when it comes time to the lecture, you know, I pray to the spiritual master, I pray to the spiritual master. Pray to Krishna that please, please, please enter my mind and say the words that I need to say. If you're sincere and you really want to make a difference for those who are hearing, you know, Krishna will help you. The more we depend on the Lord and the Lord's mercy, coming through the spiritual master, the more we're free from the anxiety that we are, you know, I, I'm the doer, you know. Thank you, Maharaj. Very, very good points. Amazing. Yes, no, uh, Namrata, go ahead. You know, Namrata, now when I call your name, I'm waiting for your new name, just to give you a hit, just to share that little joy in me. But <laughs> go ahead, Namrata. <laughs> same here, same here. I'm also waiting for the new name. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll give her a new name. Her name is going to be Rata Nam instead of Nam <laughs> <laughs> Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Actually, <laughs> even I am... I'm waiting for the new name because Gurmaj already told me he really likes my name. So I'm just wondering what is the new name he wants to give me. <laughs> we will wait for the auspicious moment. <laughs> Until then, we will wait patiently. <laughs> Go ahead, Navrata, with your question. We'll call you Mumbai Mataji. That would be your new name. Please, I have a request. Please give me a transcendental name, <laughs> Gurmaj. All right, we'll say we'll say Mumbai instead of that. <laughs> that almost sounds like the mafia Guru Maharaj. <laughs> it's a Mumbai. It it's does. associated with the mafia. <laughs> Mumbai and mafia are synonymous. <laughs> if you grew up in New Vrindavan, you can understand what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's that. We have to ask that for, from you when we see you in person, March. What is that twist in that new Vrindavan thingy? <laughs> they give names according to. Uh, I don't know. I can't, the rationale behind I can only explain, but I don't understand. <laughs> Marsha, I remember one devotee. Um, and, and and as you're speaking, I'm remembering a couple of things. One devotee said to me that in in New Vrindavan, she was born in New Vrindavan, and whatever the mentality and the and the rationale was with that, if she was given the name Karma Yoga, and she hated her name so much, and she couldn't wait to get initiated to get her name changed, what it did. She said, I never liked my name Karma Yoga. <laughs> it's just interesting because I was just with her husband. I met him. He, he was in the Naveen. <laughs> yeah, Naveen Christian. He was in my class in, uh, when I was in uh, Mayapur. And uh, yeah, now she's Krishna Priya. <laughs> yeah, she's the one, Maharaj. She's the one. That's right. She couldn't wait to get initiated because she said, I just wanted to get my name changed. She said, I don't know why my parents named me Karma Yoga. What a name. <laughs> Well, her father's name starts with a K. Her mother's name starts with a K. Her brother's name starts with a K. <laughs> I guess they ran out of K, so they gave it Carmen. <laughs> oh, 
Oh my goodness, yes, Maharaj. Number of times, sorry. Go ahead, Mataji. That wasn't, I... that wasn't as bad as one devotee did chapter Nasya. <laughs> With the whole day. <laughs> for four months, he ate kitchen only for four months. And after the four months was over, chapter Nasya was over. He got married, he had a son, and they named his son Kitchley. This is him. <laughs> he still goes by that name. <laughs> Hare Krishna Chaitanya. <laughs> Marsh, I, I wonder if there are names like Jalebi and Gulab Jamuns and all. There was, yeah, yeah, there was one, yeah, one devotee who so gave his little girl's name, and they named it Jalebi. Yeah. Hare That's Krishna. That was the Vrindavan Hakya. Vrindavan Hakya. There you go, Sri Devi. Vrindavan Hakya. Yeah, we'll call you, uh, let me see, Picasso. How about that? <laughs> Picasso is the famous artist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, what a. Oh, I, I can't believe those stories of the names. Hare Krishna. Amazing. <laughs> Number of times. There's another one where uh, devotee, he had his second son. So the community leader gave him the name Ananta for the boy's name, which was a nice name, but it meant that's the end. No more. No more kids. Oh, no more kids. Oh, I thought it meant like finish this life and go back to Godhead. There's no more kids. Okay. <laughs> Not that that's the last one. So the, the finale. But he was doing a, a business. He was making these, you know, these candy bars. And he set up a little business. And he used to call the bars Yogi, Yogi bars. So he would sell them. So after he had a second son, he decided to have another kid. Another boy was born, and the temple leader told him not to have any more, so he named the boy Yogi Bob. <laughs> and uh, so he still goes by the name Yogi. They dropped the bar part, you know, for Yogi. <laughs> Marsh, you have some really amazing New Vrindavan stories, Maharaj. <laughs> I don't know if they're amazing, but... <laughs> <laughs> Hare Krishna. <laughs> I'm sorry, Namrata. <laughs> Go ahead. Maharaj has already changed the entire mood of the, of the series, what was going on. I, I was supposed to ask a serious kind of question and now everything is in the universe. <laughs> I apologize. It's my fault. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Maharaj, for this because uh, I have to ask this. So, um, when usually, this is what I face. Um, so, the, the difference between react and respond, that is what I want to know because usually in the practical situation theoretically we do read in the shastras what is the difference but then uh when the situation comes when the spontaneous situation comes we tend to forget the difference between the react and respond so well, well, reacting is something you you do based on your conditioning the way the thing comes to you, you have a tendency to react according to your condition. A response is something that is more thoughtful. So you will want to respond to something but not react to something. React is like pushing the button. The response is more like thinking about what, how you're going to you know, uh, you know, reciprocate with this situation. Reacting really doesn't allow for thought. It just happens automatically. 
it's a condition of our conflict. We react in a certain way, but it may not be correct or beneficial or proper. So if you're into response, means to think about how to respond, how to give back. <laughs> you don't want to get away from this reacting thing because it's more a uh, an element of our condition. Element of? Of our condition. Okay. Okay. So usually, Guruma, what happens is uh, since uh, we are into uh, reading uh, the scriptures, so uh, I don't react uh, instantaneously, but then sometimes it happens that I'm reacting in my mind. I'm not, I'm not um, taking it out in the form of words because I want to think at that time what the situation has happened. I do want to think at that time, but then the reaction does happen in my mind. So it should, how to control that or is it, <laughs> I, I, I know for sure it's not healthy when reacting in mind. Well, <laughs> There's no, there's no offense or no negativity coming upon you if you react in the mind. But if it if it allows to stay in the mind, or if you're conditioned to react in the mind, then there is a tendency that it may also come out in the form of words or actions. So you have to remove that that reactive type of mindset by being more thoughtful. So as soon as you want to react, replacing the thought from this as opposed to you know coming to reacting means finishing the response to something. This thoughtfulness means to think, oh how do I respond to this situation? So, if the, in the, I think you just read it. It was in the 18th chapter of the same you know, first chapter, in verse number seven, in the very beginning of the purport, it says that uh, negative thoughts or sinful thoughts in the mind do not count against the person because in the age of Pali, uh, there is so much pollution that. Uh, this concession is given to the conditioned souls. It's only when they speak it or when they act upon it and then the reaction is come. But if you're thinking good or you're reacting in a spiritual way, then even if you don't speak it, then you get benefit for that. That's a certain concession given to the condition solves in this age is probably because of the deterioration of the age. So, but the danger is leaving it in the mind and accepting that type of uh, uh, response, then easily it may also come out in the form of words or activity. And then you get implicated. Thank you, Maharaj. Very good question, Namrata. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dhanush. Any questions from devotees that you would like to ask, um, please do raise your hand going down the list so I don't miss anyone here. And um, if there isn't much, would you like to end with a round of chanting, Maharaj? Yeah. Today Perfect. I, yeah. Okay. Please don't shut your camera off and then do something else while we're chanting. <laughs> you're gonna yes. be you're gonna be on board. 
If you don't want to put your camera on for whatever reason, simply join in the chanting. And those of you that can turn your camera on with chanting, please do so. Thank you. Because when everyone does the same activity together, everyone benefits from that. When people are pulling the other way, and then they're part of the same group doing something different, they're pulling that energy in another direction. The water sound effects so the benefit that people get. So everyone should work together. If you don't want to chant, then then uh, best if you just you know click yourself off. But if you want to stay chant, camera on or camera off, it doesn't matter. But stay with the chanting and don't do you know household chores or whatever else you could possibly do. <laughs> Okay,